Machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence that requires a computer to be trained through programming and a lot of data so that it could make accurate predictions. There are many machine learning use cases such as predicting weather forecasts, business forecasts, and fraud detection. We'll be taking a look at a case study example where we try to predict the weather based off of a given date. A popular Python library that contains already coded algorithms used for machine learning purposes is scikit-learn. This library is built on top of NumPy, Matplotlib, and a library that is used heavily in mathematics and science called SciPy. The three high-level categories of machine learning are supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and semi-supervised learning. Supervised learning works with label data, meaning that there is a known output, which is also referred to as the target variable. Unsupervised learning works with unlabeled data, meaning that there's no known target variable. One of the goals for unsupervised learning is to examine any possible patterns in the data that can be labeled. Semi-supervised learning is more complex and uses both labeled and unlabeled data and is related to something called deep learning. Focusing only on supervised learning and unsupervised learning, there are two lower level subcategories for each of them, as shown here. The main focus in this module is regression which is a type of supervised learning. A case study on how to apply this will be discussed in the coming slides. Which machine learning algorithm to use depends on what needs to be predicted. When the target variable, which is the variable being predicted, is a continuous value, then a regression algorithm is used. However, if the target variable deals with a discrete variable, then a classification algorithm is used. To be able to use a supervised learning algorithm, the data must be structured in rows and columns. Each row is a sample or observation. In these examples, the columns contain the features noted in blue and the associated target shown in red. A feature is the name used in the machine learning world, which is also known as the independent variable. And the target is conventionally known as the dependent variable. The target column in the regression table example is quantitative whereas the target in the classification table is categorical. Essentially, the features are the input data used to output or predict the target. These are the typical steps taken when applying a machine learning model. Although these steps will be applied in our regression example, these could be used for the classification type of problems as well as unsupervised learning type of problems. These steps involve multiple Python libraries. The first few steps primarily relate to Pandas, NumPy, and data visualization libraries such as Matplotlib and Seaborn. The other steps will involve scikit-learn. The standard way to import scikit-learn tools is a little different from how we normally do imports. So instead of importing the entire library package, we import the specific tool or object that will be used. Note that there is no alias used like with PD for Pandas or PLT for Matplotlib or SNS for Seaborn. Take a moment and review the general syntax examples. On the right is how you would typically import using scikit-learn. The from keyword is entered first, followed by the package name, followed by a period, and then the module name that contains the object needed. Afterwards, the import keyword is entered, followed by the object name. These examples related to scikit-learn demonstrate how to import two objects. For example, in the first bullet point, it states from the scikit-learn module named linear model, import the linear regression object. So whenever the linear regression object is used in the program, it will be referred using the same name without an alias that precedes it. As a case study example, we'll focus on supervised learning and build a model that predicts the average high temperature in January for New York. Since the target variable is related to predicting temperatures, which is a continuous value, then we will use a regression algorithm. The data obtained consists of historical averages of high temperatures for New York from 1895 to 2018. In this case study example, we will use only one feature to predict the target, which is the average high temperature. Since we have one variable predicting a continuous value, then a simple linear regression is conducted. This means that the classic 
y equals mx plus b formula will be applied on the data to determine the best fit model. The calculated slope and intercept will be used to make predictions. Machine learning notation for simple linear regression is slightly different, but practically the same. One main distinction is the y-intercept in machine learning, which is instead called bias. High bias leads to inaccurate predictions, as we will see later. The formulas shown are to give you an idea of the calculations involved, but no manual calculations are needed since we will be using an estimator object that will take care of this. The ordinary least squares approach will be applied when using the linear regression object estimator from scikit-learn. The algorithm will look at the feature and target data and estimate a regression line that best fits the model with the least amount of residuals between the predicted value and the expected value, also known as the actual or observed value. To measure how well the prediction model fits the data after it's been trained, we will use test data to test the model and then look at the, the accuracy score, which is the R squared, known as the coefficient of determination. Let's now go back to the case study related to the New York temperatures and go through the first few steps. The data is loaded and inspected, showing that the data set contains three variables, date, value, and anomaly. For this demonstration, only the first two data columns will be needed. The date, which represent the year data, as well as the values, which represent the temperature data. Next, we clean the data by removing the anomaly data column and renaming the second data column label to temperatures. Since the date column contains values that end in 01, which stands for January of that year, the floor division method is used to adjust the date value. Afterwards, we examine the descriptive statistics to understand the data a little better. Based off of the describe method, it looks like there are 124 samples collected between 1895 and 2018. That means we have 124 years of data. The temperatures range between 26.10 and 47.60 degrees Fahrenheit. Part of exploring data is through visualizations. Typically, each feature in a data set is compared to with the target variable. In this case study, the feature is the year, that will predict temperature and is visualized using a scatter plot diagram. The pattern in the visual does not show a linear relationship between date and temperature, but we'll continue on with the steps of creating a prediction model anyway to demonstrate the steps in developing the model. Afterwards, we need to split the data containing the features and target into separate variables and also create subsets for the train and test data. The syntax for the New York data is shown here, and there's a lot to dissect. A detailed explanation will be provided in the coming slides. For now, let's take a look at line number one. This code is importing the specific object, which is a function that is needed to split the data. The name of this function object is train test split, which comes from the model selection module in scikit-learn. The next line of code starts off with four variables, x train, x test, y train, and y test, that will store the train test split function results. This code is exercising what is called unpacking a tuple. Let's break down how this works with a more simplified example and then further examine this code. Unpacking a tuple means that the data inside a tuple object is assigned to multiple variables that parallel the number of items in that tuple. In this example here, there are three items in the variable that is a tuple data type. These are the values one, two, and three. The next cell block unpacks the tuples, or the, the items in the tuple, to three variables in their respective order. Part of the train test split function may require that you reshape the data in which the variable stores the data values in rows within a column. If the feature variable is structured as one row and contains no column, then the function will display an error. The example you see here is a NumPy array that contains five row values and no column. Therefore, 
the data structure must be reshaped into five rows and one column. This reshape method contains two arguments, negative one, comma, one. The negative one value infers that the row values will stay the same, and the positive one creates one column that the row values will be a part of. The last conceptual point relates to the last keyword argument in the scikit-learn function train test split, where we have random underscore state equals 11, which uses a NumPy C generator behind the scenes. The simplified example up top on the right in line number two contains the np.random.seed. The value 112 is an arbitrary number that can take any integer value greater than zero. Without complicating things too much, the arbitrary number 112 is used for reproducibility, meaning that if an algorithm involves a random sample that will be used to perform a calculation, then the same random sample and result can be replicated using the same arbitrary number argument. In our case study example, the test train split function splits the data using random sampling and uses the number 11 assigned to the random state parameter. So this can be replicated later. So putting all of this together, it should be a little bit more clear as to what's going on in the test train split function. The variable names assigned in line three are standard practice. That is the feature data for train and test data is denoted using a capital X, and the target data uses a lowercase y, as shown here. There are other keyword arguments that could be passed in, but will not be used in this example. Instead, we will stick with the default arguments. Leaving the default arguments as is means that the data split for the train and test subsets will be 75% and 25% respectively. That means that most data will be needed to train the model, and this is for reliability purposes. The next step is to fit the training data using an estimator object. This estimator object must be imported from scikit-learn as shown in line number one. Afterwards, the imported object named linear regression is instantiated to a variable named model. In simple terms, this means that the hidden contents inside the linear regression estimator, which are things related to the regression algorithm and methods, are assigned to a variable named model. Now, the model variable is an object that is capable of performing methods and attributes, as we will see next in line number five. The model variable chains the fit method, which contains the keyword argument that passes in the training data that was split earlier. This is what is called training the model. Eventually, the train model will be used on new data, which is the test subset data, to see how well the model performs in making predictions. Once the fit method is applied, the algorithm is executed for the regression and generates the model parameters. These model parameters, the slope and the y-intercept, could be retrieved using the model object's attributes, dot coef underscore and intercept underscore. The model parameters, slope and y-intercept, could be used to create a user-defined function and formulate the y equals mx plus b to predict future temperatures. There is a method that could be used instead of the user-defined function called predict. The second code cell shows the model object using the predict method for year 2022, yielding the same results as the user-defined function above. We can evaluate the x-test data using the predict method as well. Remember that this is the test subset containing the feature data, which makes up 25% of the overall data. The predicted results are stored in the predicted variable. Next, we have the Y test, which contains the observed or expected target values. So in this example, we're just assigning this same subset into a different variable named expected. To evaluate the predicted value and expected value, we use a for statement as shown here. Line two uses the zip function to pair each item from two intervals into a tuple. 
This will be further explained on the next slide using a more simplified example. Line 3 is the for statement that iterates on every fifth item in the target results variable. And line 4 is the print statement for the output seen below the code. The placeholders contain arbitrary variables P and E from the for statement, but also include a colon dot 2 f which is a way to limit the decimal points in the prediction and the expected values. This only works for the f-string format in print statements. So here's a breakdown to better understand how the zip function works in Python. Basically, there are two separate arrays, one for the predicted values and the other one for the expected values. The predicted values are shown first in the output in a horizontal format, and the expected shown second in a vertical format. Each item in both iterables are matched by their index and placed into a tuple. The result shown here is a list of tuple elements since the list function was used in line number 5. And this is what was used in line number 2 when comparing the predicted and expected outcomes. A scatter plot using Seaborn is provided along with the regression line of the model through some NumPy code. The regression line is almost horizontal signaling a poor fit model. In other words, the model does not fit the data and cannot make accurate predictions. This is what is called an underfit model. The goal is to build a prediction model that shows a linear trend that can make predictions with the least amount of error or variance. In our case, the model or the regression line is nearly horizontal. We would need to improve the model by providing other features. A metric used to measure how well the model fits the data is called R squared. We can apply the score method on the model to examine the proportion of variance that has been explained by the independent variable. This metric ranges from 0 to 1. The closer to 1, the better. And in our case, the metric shows a 0, a negative 0, indicating that the model is not sufficient. Another accuracy check that can be used is through the cross-validation metric. This approach is different from the train-test split, and instead, this function splits the training data to a specified number of subsets called folds. Each fold will be trained except one, which will act as a testing data on the trained model. This process will iterate until each fold was used as a train set and as a test set. The average R square will be used as the accuracy check. The link to the Python documentation describing the cross validation is provided here. Here is the cross validation applied in the case study to demonstrate its functionality. So, in line one is an import statement to obtain the cross validation function, and in line two is to obtain the linear regression estimator object. In line three, we instantiate the object to the model, and then in line four, uses the cross val score object function, taking in several arguments. The first argument is the model that was instantiated, and then we have the feature and target data being passed through, and the last argument with the value five being passed into the CV parameter means that we want the system to go through five iterations that will produce five R squares that will be averaged to get a more accurate R square result. To conclude, the accuracy scores and visualization in the case study showed a poorly fit model. More work would need to be done to see if this model could be improved. Some examples on what to do next to improve the model are listed here, but go beyond the scope of this module. Keep in mind that these steps taken in the case study can be mimicked on a different scenario with different data. It could be used with multivariate regression, where there are multiple features to predict a target. Moreover, it could also be used for other machine learning types.